Hi, this is Marcy Davis with our very first glass caster tutorial. Podcasting is a great way to share enhanced tutorials. You should be seeing a lot more of them from us. Please let me know how you like them and send your comments to firelady at gate.net. Today's tutorial shows you how to create and love yourself. This is an on mandrel project featuring the delicious flesh tones of Lausch's Caramello. Artwork and narration by Susie Fitzwater. Thanks, Susie. I started doing it with oven baked clay and decided I would like to try it with the glass. The self is just, it's a self because it started with Susie's elf. And then we did the play on words of that it's okay to take yourself out to lunch and you can talk to yourself. And I chose Lausha because that's the frame we're doing this in. I use all 104s pretty much. I step out a little bit, but not much. I'm kind of a chicken with other things. And the main focus for this was that I like the Caramello for the um, skin colors because it gets a little bit rosy. I've used ivory, and it it's flat. And I've used this the Moretti pink, and it's okay, but it's so pink. And so I really, when I first got the Caramello, I really liked it for the flesh. That was my first thought when I got it was, Ooh, this is a good skin color. And that's what I use for my flesh, and I love it. This was just a twisty for vine and leaf, something to add a little interest. I've used just straight green stringers, but for this I wanted something a little more interesting. So those are the four colors I used for my twisty stringer for leaves and vines. This is the twisty I used for his hat. And that's the Lausha Hocus Pocus and the Lausha, what is that color? Mm, supernova. And I like the combination because the Supernova, after I put this on his hat brim and I heated it down, I got a little bit of color change in there. So I got three colors instead of just two. So that was nice. This is stringers pulled for the flowers that he's holding. Just some colors that I kind of grabbed ra randomly. I tend to use brighter colors, but that's what I grabbed. So I have nice bright yellow centers. This is the Caramello, and it shows you a regular rod size and then the stringer size. I try to pull the stringers actually a little fatter than what you see, but I'm not very good at pulling fat stringers. And I use those for the arms, the fat ones, and then the tips I use for the nose, the ears, the toes. So I usually pull at least two different sizes of stringers. This shows all the stringers on a ruler to give you kind of an idea of the thicknesses. Um, obviously the thinnest one is that yellow, which I used for the center of my flowers. This, I don't know, goes, gives you an idea of my stringer thicknesses. So then we can go on to actually building a self. I use the smallest mandrels because then I can get my figure smaller. The bigger the mandrel, the bigger your bead, no matter what you do. So go smaller if you want a smaller bead. It's the only way to work it. Um, so I start by wrapping a basic kind of a cone shape. And I do it this way so that I can see my body size. And then I melt it and reshape it so that it will be the way I want it. But I, I start with the initial size and I add if I need more. So I melt down and I hold it. Well, you can see by the angle. I let it droop down. This end that's down will be the neck. And then I will use my shaping tool to press the wedge back up. And that gives you kind of that little dimple in the neck area. You can see now that there's that neck. And then I heat the bottom and let it kind of droop down and widen. And you can always fiddle with the shape, and if you don't like it, you melt it and do it again. There is the beginning of the bottom. I use the razor tool, and I just kind of roll up halfway. Then I use the very tip of my razor tool to cut in just a little bit, so you have that little dimple. And that's really all there is to making a bottom. 
So then the next thing is to flip it over and heat the belly for the belly button. I take and I hang that guy with his bum sticking up, straight up above, and right below I let his belly sag, and then I use my poker tool and poke straight up into that so that I'm pretty much right across from each other. So if you look closely, you can see the belly button in there, kind of, sort of. Then after I get the belly button on, I go for the feet. And for the feet, I usually use the big rod. Um, depends on the size of myself that I'm making. If I'm making a really tiny one, I like the stringers. But usually I just use a large rod. And I build several swipes on each side for the left and the right foot. And I start from the heel and I go down to the toe and I let it drip. Because then you're going to heat it and let it fall back on itself, and that widens your foot. So here you can see the several layers on the feet. Looks pretty funky, doesn't it? <laughs> I heat one foot at a time, and if you heat one at a time, you have a little more control. There we go. There's heat, and you can see the toe. It's all glowy, and the heel is starting to form it back in. So I let it kind of drip, and then I flip it back over and let it, push back in on itself, kind of back and forth a little bit. Then when it looks pretty melted in, you don't have a lot of ridges, I flatten it on the edge of a marver. My marver's right on my torch, so I can just see it right in front of me. So I just plunk him right down, and then you repeat the process with the other foot. See, and there it is. It's heated up. The toe is glowing. And you just press it down. And if you're lucky, when you look at the end, you'll have two little end steps. I don't always get the end steps. See, and there's not a lot of instep on those. He's a little more of a club foot. But that's okay. <laughs> so after I've got my feet on, I put a little I put some of my decoration on so that when I put his arms on, he's holding on top of something and then I will layer more over the top. So here I put some of the green twisty and a few blobs of blue for flower. After I've got my flowers, then this is just poking. A st I heat it up really, superheat it, poke my stringer straight in and snap it off for the center of the flower. And I'll repeat that with that blue one that's over there. So here you go. Here he is with two flowers and some vine or leaf or ivy or whatever you want it to be. The next thing I do then is add my arms. I use my fat stringer. I start at the shoulder and I swipe straight down for an elbow and then do a right 90-degree uh, turn across whatever he's holding. And here you see it from the back. You can see his shoulders. And you want to make sure that you heat his shoulders in really well because I've had a lot of arms pop off because that stringer has not been fused in well. So here's a side view. It shows you the arm wrapping over the top of the green. And here's a front view of both hands holding on. And the hands are just an extra little blob. And then I might kind of press them a little bit. So it gives it kind of a fist look. And then you cover it with greenery and flowers so nobody can see that you didn't make fingers. So there's some of that greenery going over the hand. Uh, twisties and... You know, goldstone always looks really good thrown in places and a little bit of green, tiny stringer. There's some more wrapped up over the elbow, and you can see this is really good to do also because it helps to melt those shoulders in more so you get less arm poppage. And a good thing to remember is the whole time you're adding this, heat the bottom, heat the feet. Uh, feet crack off, bottoms get cracks that go all the way up the back, and then your whole body splits in half. So remember to heat constantly. Keep this little guy warm. He does not like to get cold. Here's a bunch of little flowers stuck on just randomly. You can see I've covered up his hands. You can still see his arms through it, but, you know, cover up the fingers because you don't want to do fingers. So these are just – it's a light – I think I used a super light blue, and then I put dots of a transparent over. 
And then I just heat each one of those individually and poke with the yellow stringer. See, and here you go. Here's beginning to heat one. It's superheated, and I just try to place the heat just on that one flower so that everything else doesn't droop too badly on me. And after you heat that one flower and poke it, give the whole body a little bit of heat before you go on to the next one, so that helps you avoid upsettedness later on. <laughs> there you go. All the flowers have been heated, poked, and also around the background of it, I added some more just tiny yellow dots. Just I wanted more color, so I just threw some more yellow dots in all over the place, and then everything's kind of heated to a nice little glow. And here it shows you that after it's cooled, you can see where I placed some of those yellow dots. It's just whatever you want to do. Flowers are super easy, and you can't do them wrong. You just can't. So now we got to do the toes, and this is one where I tend to hold my breath because even with super small stringers sometimes, it just, your toes meld together. You just get these toes that cling. So I start with, if you look at this bottom of his foot, I'll do one foot first and then the other, and I do the big toe and give it a larger blob that's kind of tall. And then I do, my feet tend to have four toes. I've done three, depends on how many, how spread out they are. And then after you've got all your toes on your feet and you've reheated your whole body a little bit, I introduce the feet into the fire just very gently and let those toes kind of fall down on themselves to round so that you don't have the tall pole look to it. This shows you that I heated one foot and the toes are pulling in on themselves and I, I flip it up, I flip it down, depends on how that glass is falling. Just just heat it gently and take your time with it. Don't rush it. Then reheat the whole body so it doesn't get too cold. Keep the guy warm. So here you go. There's all the toes melted in. And you can see my toes are not the same on both feet. But nobody's got feet that are the same, right? Uh, no, I don't anyway. So after I've melted those toes, I start flashing that whole thing in the heat again, and then that helps to bring the color up in the caramello. That's something that I still am practicing with, is getting just the right color. If you flash it in and out of the heat, let it cool some, then flash it in and out some more, it brings out a rosiness. To it. it has more life. I really like it. All right, so it's time for the head. And I wrap on a disc of flesh color, which is the caramello. Thank you. And then right next to that, I wrap a disc of whatever color I want for the hat. So this, what you're looking at is the whole head. At the lower half is the face. The upper half is the hat. And then you start introducing the heat right in between the two, and they'll slowly melt together, and you'll have a pretty nice straight line of hat, hat where the hat brim will go. And it's kind of nice if it's not perfect. And I always like to take the lower part and make that the back of the head. So here you go. See how it's starting to melt in together. Just take your time. Keep spinning it slowly, and it melts in. So then you have your hat and face. And I always like to have, it's kind of a one-third, two-third. I just get lucky that way most of the time. But I like to have more hat than skin showing. That's just mine. But So then I wanted to add some texture to this hat. I took my razor tool and I just gently cut in a, a spiral so that it had some depth to that hat. A lot of times I'll just leave it smooth and it looks like a beanie, and that's just fine too. So after I cut the spiral in for the hat, that's when I put the eyes in, after I've done that super heat. I spot heat one part of the face. I plunge in a black stringer, blow on it to let it cool, and then snap it off. And then I do that for the other eye. So there's the second eye. I superheat just that one spot, and I try to avoid my first eye. Plunge it in, blow on it to cool it, and then snap it off. And there's your two eyeballs. So you've got your eyes, and then you need your little mouth. Next thing I do is superheat uh, below the eyes where the chin area is, and I use just the corner of my razor tool 
to cut a V, just to press, not really cut, but to press in a V with just the very tip and try to kind of work a little bit of a smile. Sometimes as you do it, it pushes the cheek up over above the eye a little bit. That's okay. It gives you just a little different look, makes him a little happier looking. So that picture shows him with his eyes and his smile. And then also this picture shows the hat brim, which is the next step after the mouth. After, I, after I've superheated the eye part and done the mouth, you put the brim, and that's your twisty. Start in the back of the head and just very slowly wrap your twisty around right at the line where the head and hat colors match and wrap it around, and then you want to make sure you heat that so that your twisty is fused down because the hat brims also snap off. They're, they're infamous for popping off, usually with an ear taken with them. On this hat, since I did the spiral, I wanted to give him kind of a little decoration on the top of his hat. This is just the green twisty, and I just kind of blobbed the piece on, and then I pressed it gently because I wanted to put some flowers on top. If you look at the brim of this, in this picture, you can see where the supernova has changed color a little bit. So that shows you where you can get those color changes with the silvered glasses. This is just a side view. It shows you how his face looks, shows you the hat brim, how it's melted down, so it's just kind of sticking up, and it shows you where that little extra decoration is. Here we are adding some flowers in. I just put my base color dot, transparent colors over it, and then you superheat each one individually and plunge it with your yellow stringer, or my, I use yellow. Side view showing the flowers at the top of the hat, but most importantly, this shows you the nose. The nose I put on with a real thin stringer. I just heat the tip of my stringer to a little tiny blob, and I press it in there. And then I melt it so it's a half a half circle, half a ball. You don't again. Another thing you want you don't want that to be too loose. You don't want it to be undercut, or it's going to pop off on you. And all that nose is is just a dot. I don't do anything else to it. So there's his little profile. Next thing is the ears. Look at that face. That's so cute. All right. Take your stringer and you get a, um, I don't know. Usually I do two blobs. I do a blob. I heat it up. I press it and kind of pull gently. And then I always find I don't have quite enough, so I put a little more on top. And I do both sides together so that I can kind of see how much I need for each side, make sure they're, the ears are fairly close to the same. So then I superheat again. Right where the ear and the, and the head meet, you can see where in this picture, that's where it's kind of a different color. It's a little more translucent. I really heat that, and then I use a poking tool, and I poke straight in, and then I lean back against the ear, and that gives you kind of that little crease in the ear. This is how you make elf ears, and I learned this from Sharon Peters when I took her class. You get your ear, the outer edge of it hot, and you touch it with your stringer and just very gently pull it, and that gives you a little pointy ear. And then if you don't like it, you melt it and do it again. Do the other ear done the same way, and I try to kind of curve the ears back over the hat because I found that if they stick out, they tend to catch on things. There he is. He's done. That's the whole little guy. And I think that's it. And I think that's about the cutest little elf I have ever seen. I want to make one. In any event, if you've got an idea for a tutorial, just email me, firelady at gate.net. Give me a description of the project. Most important, of course, are the photos. So thanks again, Susie, and thanks for listening to Glasscaster. See you next time. <laughs>